Hi, this is Ed from XMPT Games and we're going to be using Photoshop's vector tools to create a character like this for use in a video game. Here we can see an idea of the end result we're aiming for. In Unity, this penguin character is being animated by taking the individual parts of him, like his arms, legs and body, and then animating them via Unity. He's not a sprite based animation, but he does have a sprite sheet, and if we go and have a look at that, we can see that actually each of the individual parts of him, like his body, arms, face, bits like that, are drawn separately and then just put together in the animation. So, we're going to create a second character for this same game, and it's going to be a stag. I've got my Photoshop canvas laid out here with a few things on it. First of all, there's my sketch of the stag character who we're going to be creating in this tutorial. That was just drawn in pencil on a bit of paper, photographed on my phone, and then dragged in here. You really don't need to worry too much about the quality of that sketch because I'm not going to be using any of the pencil lines in the final thing that I create. The other thing that we have is this penguin character for reference. So this is the existing creature that's in the game so far um, and I've got him just to kind of show what we're going to have at the end. These are like mock-ups of what he's going to end up looking like in each frame and then these are the bits that are used to make up that image. So this is what we really want but we're first of all going to be building it like this and then splitting it out into these pieces for each direction of movement that we're going to be creating for our stag. I've also got another penguin character over here just to give me a size reference. So I want this stag to be kind of the wise benevolent leader of the penguins and nothing says wise benevolent leader like being a little bit taller and having a mystical staff. So this stag is the guy we're going to be creating. We'll do a little bit of layer admin first. Uh, very important to keep stuff tidy as you're working on something like this. I'm going to just create a folder and I'll call that vector stag. And everything that I create for my vector version of the stag is going to live inside that folder. And when I create layers inside that folder, you can see they're a little bit indented from the others and they'll be collapsed away when I do that and they'll be hidden when I hide the folder. They'll also be moved when I move the folder around if there's anything in them. We're going to be using Photoshop's vector tools to create our stag, so you're going to be getting familiar with this section of the tool palette over here. It's worth just explaining why we're using these tools very quickly. We're going to be actually outputting a PNG, which is not a vector file, um, and bringing that into Unity to use as a sprite sheet. Uh, the reason for working with vectors when we're creating it, though, is that we then have a PSD file as the original that's in vector format and if we need to come back and make any tweaks later uh, particularly if those tweaks are resizing that is much much easier to do with a vector file because you've still got the ability to scale the stuff that you've drawn up as much as you like without any loss of quality and the second that you go to a raster format like PNG that's lost so one example might be that if our stag character becomes particularly popular after the game is released and there's a massive outcry for t-shirts with his likeness on. Uh, if I've drawn him that small that would make a bit of a lame t-shirt with a stag that size on there. We'd need to scale it up and since I've got a vector version I can just size it up just with a, a few clicks and typing in some larger numbers versus if I had a rest, raster file I would basically need to redraw it at a larger size. So it just gives you more flexibility later on. We'll start off by explaining some of the concepts we're going to be working with uh, here. If we create a rectangle by selecting the rectangle tool there, uh, and with all of these tools, if you click and hold on them, you get a little menu. So if yours isn't showing a rectangle at the moment, it's showing one of these other things. Just click and hold, select the rectangle tool, and then we click, drag, and let go to create a rectangle. The properties of that rectangle, uh, my properties window I've got on my toolbar here that's automatically opened up, you'll also probably find them up the top here definitely even if you don't have that in your workspace. And that rectangle has got a fill color and a stroke color. I'm not going to be using any strokes probably, I don't think, um, maybe don't hold me to that, um, but the fill colour is important. Just to show you what a stroke would do, if we pop a red stroke on there, it draws an outline on the shape that you're creating, but the style that I'm going for here doesn't really have any outlines to shape, so the chances are I won't be using that unless I need to do something very specific. Uh, you've also got a fill colour, 
um, and that will change the, the color that the shape is filled with like so we'll keep it as a brown for now um, I might as well go into a little more detail on the stroke actually if you are trying to work with strokes and um, you want to tweak anything more about the behavior of that you can click on this menu here and you've got things like where it's aligned so whether it's drawn on the inside of the shape or the outside of the shape like so uh, how the caps are handled which won't have any difference in here but also the corners so if you want those corners to be rounded on the stroke you can change it from there I'll just change my things back because I'm not going to be using it and it will surprise me if I come back and find them changed in another project right so no stroke this one just means none of that you could also have no fill if you so wish now we're going to manipulate that shape a little bit and I'll show you some of the tools used for doing that. We've got these select tools. We have path select here, which will grab you that whole shape and let you just move it around like so. And then you've got the direct selection tool, which is more useful to us as we're kind of building and reshaping things. That lets you pick a single point on the shape just by clicking on it. And then if you click and drag, you can move just that one point and that can change the shape that you're working with there. Another important tool is the pen tool here and again that has a bunch of options on it. You've got the, we're not really going to use the freeform pen tool but the pen tool, the add anchor point tool and the delete anchor point tool are all useful. Delete anchor point for example is used to take one of these, they're called anchor points and just remove it from the shape. The add anchor point tool is used to add one into the shape and you can see that when we add it it's actually going to be a different type of point if we click to move that and we move it back up we've now got four points in our shape but that one is not behaving like the others this is now a bezier curve point um, and the way that you switch between the two modes is this convert point tool so if I click that one I'll switch it back to being a square corner and if I take any of my corners and I click and drag on them I'm then turning it into a bezier point corner and depending on the direction that I drag that will depend on the shape that I get so you can use this to create a rounded corner and then once you've done that you can actually take each of these handles independently and drag them around to create all sorts of interesting kind of bum shapes really um, so there we go there is a quick introduction to the tools that we're going to be using and I'm going to try to go over and click on the palette whenever I use one of them so it's easier to follow once you are familiar with working with this stuff there are all kinds of modifier tricks that you can do and you can basically do everything with just the pen tool selected and then mousing over in different places to get different contexts of the tool or holding over diff holding down different modifier keys to do the other functions so if you're getting kind of uh, confident with this that's something that you might want to look into now we are ready to start drawing our stag and the first thing is we probably don't need this lovely shape over here so we'll just delete that layer and you do that by popping over to your layers palette finding that one and deleting it we don't want that anymore. We're going to be making a fresh start on our stag and actually a rectangle is a pretty good approximation of this shape that makes him up here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of moving things around actually. Uh, I know I've got my scale right now so I don't need that penguin character anymore. I just click on the eye to show and hide my layers and the stag sketch I'll move it over to the left by using the move tool just drag it over here on my canvas just because I know that menu is going to be popping open over here as I'm using vector tools so that will keep him nice and out of the way so back into my vector stag folder to make sure that new things I create get put in there uh, the shape of this stag we've kind of got one two three four five six a six pointed shape um, but rather than start with a hexagon I'm just going to start with a rectangle that's roughly the right kind of size and we'll drag that to be the right size at the base of the stag there I'm going to drag it up to line up roughly with them there we go so there's a starting point rectangle and you can pretty immediately see that I can no longer see my drawing of the stag which is very sad um, we could do some clever stuff here actually let's do some clever stuff let's take our sketch and move it up onto this layer and if I use the eyedropper tool and just grab the background color of that sketch and go to image adjustments replace color what's that live there 
and this fuzziness just controls how strict about it being exactly that color it is so if it's down there it's only exactly that color and this is showing us the parts of the image that's picked up as being exactly that color as we drag it further and further it starts to be less worried about how close to that character it is how close to that color it is so if we try and find a point where it sort of looks like our stag picture is still visible um, and we're getting all of the background that, that looks fairly good um, and then we bump up the lightness to make that up to a white we've then got a sketch of our stag with less of a background on it and if we stick that layer into multiply mode that means it will only darken the layers below it therefore anywhere where it's lighter like these white areas will be able to see the shapes through it that's going to be kind of useful for trying to get our shapes roughly to the same sort of shape as that stag sketch so now i can go back to my rectangle and i can see what i'm doing as i take the direct select tool grab that point there and move it to line up a bit more with the sketch we'll move that one to line up more with the sketch and then we'll go and add a couple of points to this. So we'll put one in there and we'll put one in there. We will convert both of those to being just straight points and then we will move them down to the correct area of the stag there. There we go. So there's the rough shape of our stag. Actually, I think I do want some of these to be bendy ones to smooth them out a little bit so we're going to give him a round bottom there and I think these I might want kind of a rounded edge there but a straight edge there and a straight edge there so I can do that by converting these points and then just taking those ones and I'll just plonk them actually on the dot there and we'll do that with this side too There we go, so there is the shape of our stag. And if we just, the move tool is just the thing that I click on to deselect all other tools. It's not particularly important that I'm clicking that one, but when I click it, I'm no longer using the vector tools, and that means I can kind of look at my shape without all of those handles all over it. And that's all right. He's a little bit on the lopsided side, I would say. So let's go back over to our vector tools here. Let's move that slightly over there, and let's move that one out a little bit give him a little bit more of a wise benevolent girth about him whatever that means I'll drag that out slightly, I'll drag that out slightly. so as you can see I've already pretty much totally disregarded my initial sketch that I was working from maybe it's not so useful to have that over the top so we just move it to the side for reference there now then next thing we're going to do I've got this kind of curvy line going up in there and that's because like the penguins I want him to be a sort of a two-tone color effect there so that's what I'm looking to achieve with that. Um, and given that I want them to line up completely and be perfectly in line with each other with no gap there, the best way of doing that is to actually just draw another shape on top of that shape and leave the background one filling the whole shape. Um, and an even easier way of doing that is to duplicate my background shape. So if I right click and select duplicate layer, that gets me then a copy of that rectangle. Um, and I am going to make, uh, Actually, let's make my background one a kind of a darker color. So I'll go and edit the rectangle to have a nice dark brown there. And then my foreground one is going to be a lighter shade of brown. And I'm going to start editing that to, um, to get the shape that I want. So I need it to kind of start from there and then go kind of down to here. So if I bring this point kind of down to there, that looks good. And then this point actually wants to be more kind of somewhere up there. And that gets me that sort of bendy shape that I was going for. Um, now, actually, I might want this one to be uh, more of a double-edged curve like that. And actually, I might want to put a bit of a curve onto that one too, just to smooth out that shape. And there we go. Uh, that's not bad. Something I want a bit more of a hook at the top. I don't really know why I'm wanting these things. It's just kind of a sense that I think that would look nice. I might go for something a bit like that. Uh, actually, those edges are maybe a little bit on the harsh side. So I can take that one just to smooth it out a little, maybe. There we go. That's nice. So now I've got this two-toned 
version of my stag and that rectangle is maybe a little bit on the overly contrasty side so if I click that bit in the color palette I get out the color picker and then I can go and click to sample that color that I had to start with and I want something a little bit lighter than that so I'll go for maybe somewhere around there uh, maybe a little lighter again there we go, there's my two-tone version of the stag. He's got a body, next thing he needs is a face. And these are sort of creatures disguised, they're alien creatures disguised as these penguins and stags that they're purporting to be. Um, so this is actually a kind of a mask, sort of like the, um, what was it, in Bleach, those things that have masks and watch Bleach in ages, like that. Um, we're going to start with an ellipse for his face, and we will just... Make an ellipse, roughly kind of where his face wants to be, something like that. And we'll make this then white. There we go. And again, by playing around with these tools, we can just, uh, if we drag, if, we, if you shift and click, then you can select multiple points with the direct select tool. And now I'm just going to move both of those up to there. And I think actually what I'll do is get that down a little and get that and bring it down a little so that we form yeah I, quite, I like that shape um, no I didn't want to do that uh, you've got some undo features in Photoshop so you've got control Z which just does you an undo and if you keep on pressing that it will undo and redo if you want to go more than one step back then you add the modifier alt so control alt Z and that will let me step back through time uh, and control shift Z will let me step forward through time to find the point right before where I screwed up what I was doing. And that is here, I reckon. Now if I grab this fella here, um, I'm actually going to move each of these in a little bit so he gets a bit more of a pointy, uh, pointy chin. There we go. That's not bad for a face. That'll do. Next thing we're going to do is add his antlers. And actually, this will have to have my sketch back over here now move the sketch over there. You still roughly like the sketch. Um, and now we're going to add some antlers onto him. Another thing, I, my antlers are going to be white, but I'm drawing on a white background. So I've got two options here. Either I could draw them in a different colour so they show up against the background, or I could recolour my background. And I'm going to choose to recolour my background. So I'm not going to be using any, there's no blue in this stag. I'll pick a blue. And then I will almost use the keyboard shortcut there, uh, edit, fill, and then choose the foreground colour. So that's going to be using this colour from the palette and hit OK. And then I've got this really quite horrible blue background. I really don't like that. I'm going to desaturate that a little. Uh, Shift F5 is the keyboard shortcut to do that. There we go. And that will now mean that my antlers, if I draw them in white, will show up against that. Time to add an antler. Actually, let's name some things before I do that. So there's his face. There's his light body, and there is his dark body. It's always good to be neat with your layers, so you can remember what the heck you were doing later on. These antlers are an excellent opportunity for the pen tool. Uh, so I will grab the pen tool, and I will start drawing myself. Make sure it goes on a different layer. I don't think it would add on to that shape, but I'm just going to make a new layer to make sure the antler is kept separate from the face, even though they overlap. Um, so now, let's start drawing my antler, and I'll just click each point on the antler that I want to draw. <laughs> Annoyingly, I've still got the colour set to that of the background, so this wasn't the best idea, but you'll see the shape being formed as I click, um, and then at the end, we'll magically make it go white. So we're just clicking on each point in the antler as we work our way around. And once we get to the end, we're going to click back on the first point that we created. And you see it turns, you get that little circle appear next to the pen tool that's saying, when you click, I will close off that path and we're all done. So there's our antler. And right now it's the same color as the background, but if we make it white, then it will show up beautifully. Uh, let's get rid of our sketch just so we can see the shape that we've made there. I actually quite like that. I don't know whether I'll add any curves to this one. I quite like his anchors bit, antlers being all spiky. But one thing that I don't like is that uh, at this bit here, that line sort of looks like it's going to extend out there, but then it doesn't. It goes up. So I just want to tweak that bit slightly. Uh, I want that to be a little narrower. And I want that one to kind of line up in a path with it. 
that's looking pretty good. So maybe I'll make this one a little thinner, a little thinner still. Um, I'm moving things around just with the arrow keys on my keyboard when I do that. That's why you're not seeing me clicking and dragging like before. Um, and yeah, I like that shape. Uh, that one's maybe a bit wide as well. That's looking pretty good. Um, I've played with this guy having asymmetrical antlers, so drawing the two of them separately. Uh, I didn't really like the look, so in the sketch you'll notice I've tried to get the antlers pretty much as close as possible to the same. Uh, when I'm doing this in Photoshop uh, and as layers, I can conveniently make them exactly the same. So if I call this one antler left, and then I duplicate it and call that antler right, then I've got another copy of that layer. And if I go and move that around, you can see, yeah, he's got another horn there. I'll just control alt Z, step back. And then if I go edit, transform, flip horizontal, that will just mirror that antler in the horizontal axis. And then I can move it with the move tool here and hold down, if you click, hold down shift and then start moving, that will lock it in that axis. So notice I, I can't move it up and down by mistake here because I want it to be vertically in line with the other antler, just moved over to the side and flipped. So I can position that there, uh, that's looking pretty good. And there is my stag with two antlers. Next thing he's gonna need is some eyes. So again, I'll just, just make a new layer just to be safe. Um, and I will select the ellipse tool and give him some eyes. He's going to have little... Maybe he should have bigger eyes than the others, sort of like an owl, kind of like he's wise and benevolent. I don't know if I've mentioned the word benevolent enough yet. Uh, I might try giving him big eyes, which isn't actually in the sketch, but let, let's add a little bit. Let's give him big, uh, very dark eyes. I seem to remember with... The, sorry, I'm just going to reference my penguin. I seem to remember I've used a not quite black colour for the black. So just to make sure I'm consistent, yeah, there we go. I'll just drop a sample that from the penguin. I've actually used something that's ever so slightly off black. Um, why have I done that? No real good reason. Um, <laughs> I guess it's more kind of just modern designy to lighten and desaturate everything a little bit. Uh, get rid of my penguin there. So here he is with his, his massive eye. That will position kind of lined up with the antler. And we'll make him another one of those by duplicating it and moving it over to here. There is big old owl eyes. Uh, what do I think of the big eyes? Oops. There's the sketch. I don't know, he looks a lot cuter with small eyes actually, doesn't he? Yeah, maybe let, let's not go for the owl eyes, they were a mistake. But here is one of the, oh, I was touting the benefits of vector art before to resize. If I take this ellipse here and I hit control T, or is that edit trans uh, edit free transform, uh, that then gets me this kind of resize bounding box on this thing here. If I go to one of the corners of it, I get this arrow showing me I'm going to resize it. If I hold down shift as I do so, it will maintain it being a circle, and I can size that down to, I don't know, maybe a six pixel circle, and hit enter. That's now resized me that shape. It's got very small eyes now. Actually, let's size that up. You've got another thing here. You can lock the width and height as being the same and you can type into this box. So actually I reckon maybe an 8 pixel uh, might be good. There's his eye. Just pop that one up there. And we'll get rid of his enormous eye by deleting the layer. And then duplicate his tiny eye. And move it over there. Uh, eye positioning is adds a lot to a character. So if we have his eyes very close together he doesn't look very wise at all, he looks kind of stupid. But the width of the eyes, I think, is really the measure of benevolence in a character. So I just want to see how far we can push that. That looks that looks pretty benevolent right there. And then I can actually, because I'm never really going to want to move those eyes around separately, I can just select both layers. So that's in the layer palette, I click one, and then I control click on the other one. Then I can right click and select merge shapes. And that would just mean I've got a single layer that's got both of those eyes in it now. Okay, and we'll name that eyes. Um, when I'm making these characters as well, I like to give them a little blink animation. 
So if I zoom right in, uh, and you can do a lot of stuff in the Unity editor with stuff moving around and rotating and stretching. Uh, this whole head with antlers and eyes is going to be one sprite on the sprite sheet. Um, so I'm going to do the blink with just a sprite swap instead. So I'll have a version where his eyes are open and a version where he is blinking and we'll just switch between them in order to achieve the blink effect. So for the blinking eyes I'm going to go with a rounded rectangle and kind of make it roughly the same kind of width as the eye, maybe a little wider. It being rounded has done very little at this pixel size. Uh, we'll duplicate that again, drag it off over here and position it just over that eye. Then we can merge those shapes as we did before and now you'll see that he's got a little blink. That's in blinking, that's in with his eyes open. Blink, eyes open. Lovely. That's where we'll leave it for part one. In part two, I'll finish off drawing the stag and show how he's split up ready for use in the game. If you want to keep up to date with any of the other stuff we're working on, then xmptgames.co.uk is where you'll find our blog. You could also subscribe to this channel and leave me a comment if you've got any questions about this video. Bye for now.